Hey everybody, welcome back to another video on my channel and today we have a look into how to implement WebSockets on the server and on the client with Nuxt and Nitro. It's finally time for it. Let's go. Yes, you heard it correctly. I know quite some people ask for, okay, hey, can we proxy? How do WebSockets work? A proxy I talked about in another video before and said, ah, with WebSockets it's a bit trickier. But now WebSocket support landed in Nitro with version 2.9, even though it's still experimental. But once again, experimental doesn't mean broken or incompatible. It just means that maybe some platforms are not supported yet or the API might change. So have a look out there for that. Nevertheless, we implemented straight away with Nux and Nitro and let's start with the demo application. Our demo application is as usual, quite minimal. The only thing we do is we enable the experimental WebSocket flag, which is necessary at the time of recording because Nitro's WebSockets are still experimental. It could be that that's not the case anymore. The easiest way to figure it out is watching uh, the docs. I have linked them below in the description as usual. So take a look there and make sure that it's still necessary or not. Right now, as I said, if you check the browser, it still says WebSocket support is currently experimental. And there's also an issue covering which platforms are supported. So for example, we see, okay, Nice runtime handlers work in dev, bun works, cloudflare, deno, node, except the node cluster, but there's some more that do not work yet because it might be a bit tricky to get a long running WebSocket connection with serverless functions in this case. Nevertheless, we're investigating and especially Puya is onto that. That's just as a head up. And there's one more thing to take a look at. We will check it out in the code once again. So here in our package.json, you see that I use the nightly build of Nux, so nightly channel. This, once again, might not be necessary for you at the time of watching, but the reason why I do this is because the Nux CLI has yet the pending release, which will happen in the next couple of days, that releases a very important commit necessary to support the WebSockets and dev, which is this one here. It's basically the PR348 that landed three weeks ago already. And it the only thing it's uh, basically doing, it says, okay, if we have a dev server running through the Nux CLI and there's an upgrade request coming in, so handing of WebSockets, then please make sure uh, this, the whole connection will be upgraded unless it is for the VDHMR, then we can just uh, let it handle by something else. That's the main point. Of course, there are like some uh, more things uh, to be implemented here, but especially for us, this is important. And as I mentioned, version 3.10.1 does not have that included yet but the release is pending, so version 3.10.2 or version 3.11 and onwards should include these features. And just as a little heads up, how do you see that you actually use the correct CLI version or not, or like the most updated or whichever you have? We can go into the code and what we can do is we can write pnpm y nuxi. For me, this will not give out anything because if I use the nightly version, I have to write pnpm nuxi nightly. And then you see which version is used. This is very important because just, I don't know, here, for example, if we say view 3.4.21 with that caret on here, it doesn't mean that you have 3.4.21 installed. It's just a minimal version. And uh, the caret basically says, oh, yeah, the latest version of um, the three, but minimum 3.4.21. So don't rely on whatever is here and basically rely on PMPMY or NPMY or whatever your package manager's equivalent isn't for that. Nevertheless, that's um, a little bit of important disclaimer for that because otherwise WebSockets might not work for you. But as I said, at the time of watching, you might not need it. I will also comment down below if there's a new version of Nux CLI so you don't need these steps around it. Okay, let's get started with the code, right? So as mentioned before, the app is quite minimal. We have only an app view with a WebSocket component, which is a client only component as WebSockets. Well, they're mainly relevant in the client. I would not use them with SSR. You might try one to and can, but this won't be a scope of that video. And we have, of course, an API endpoint for the Nitro API, which says define event handler. And this is where we will implement our WebSockets. Okay, in our WebSocket file, we have this define event handler function. And actually, for this time, we want to get rid of it because we want to define a specific event handler, which is the WebSocket handler, right? It's a specific way of defining an event handler. And in here, we also don't write like st straight away a function or similar because the define WebSocket handler provides some hooks because we want to hook into the lifecycle of a WebSocket. So how do you do this? Well, we can, for example, say on open, and then we get a peer here. So basically the peer that's connected. And here we can say, okay, you know what? We can log, say, okay, opened WebSocket and 
put at the peer if you want to. And then we can do other things. Like, for example, we could say, let's define uh, a general room so everybody connected gets the same messages. Just have const room and have some key here. I don't know. Let's just set it room. And then we can say peer.subscribe. So the just joined user should subscribe to the following channel. And then, of course, we could say peer.publish. So let's say, okay, we want to send something uh, to the room and say, okay, another user joined the chat, something like that. I mean, technically, this comes from the peer, so the peer won't see that. But I mean, that's fine, for example, I would say. Okay, there are a few more things we can take a look at. Uh, we can, for example, take a look at the close hook, which also makes sense to say, okay, there's the peer. We can just say, okay, the, for, the, for this peer, closed WebSocket. Nothing too crazy. We can even get the event here to figure out why it was closed as like the details basically, but we don't need it for here. Then of course, we can also have a look into the error. So if you want to know what kind of WebSocket error comes out, this is also helpful because for debugging and error tracing. So error on WebSocket, and then we give out the peer and the error. So this is very basic logging. What we didn't do so far is, well, we want to do something on a message, right? So we have another hook called message. And that hook allows us to react on a certain message that is sent. For example, we say, okay, a peer sends a message. Then we can say, first of all, we can log the whole thing. So we say uh, message on WebSocket. And then we can, for example, give the peer and the message to log both. We know which client it's from and so on. Then we can do some things, but we can also say, hey, let's publish this whole thing to the room. So let's send the message to everybody in that room by using message.txt. Because message is of type message, it's a specific class having text and raw binary data and so on and so on. So if we want to have the text, we use message.txt. Okay, so far so good. Let's save this file and see how we can actually use that on the client. And for this, we jump into our WebSocket component here. Once again, not much going on. And we use, as mentioned before, the use WebSocket composable straight away from the view use um, utility collection or composable collection. Of course, you can also implement your own, but that's the easiest way. And now we need to connect to the URL, right? So as it's client side, we can do a very simple thing. We can say WebSocket, and then we say location.host and API WebSocket important to check in prod. I just write that because if you use the code, which is also linked in the description, it might be good to have that. Uh, check if uh, secure, then use WebSocket secure. It's also a very simple check, but I'll omit it here for sake of brevity. Um, because you want to use secure connection if you have a HTTPS connection, right? And what we get out of here, we get like the status, we get some data that might be sent. We have a send function to actually send data. And we have an open and enclose function, which we probably don't really need, but we'll still, let's still provide them. So the idea would be here to say we can open the connection and close the connection manually. Um, that might be very useful as soon as we do something with hot module reload, because then the connection might be closed straight away. Okay, so we get the status of the WebSocket, the data. Fine, we're all good. We can send some things, so let's, let's do that, right? Um, and the best way to do this is, of course, by having some kind of form. So let's set up a form and say unsubmit uh, prevent uh, send data, something like that. Uh, we have an input. We can map this with a V model to say this is a message. And then we have a button to just say send. And the type, of course, is submit. Probably don't have to provide it straight away because the default should also be submit, but I prefer explicit button types. Also have an ESLint rule for that in usual my projects. Okay, let's define the message. Well, const message is just a ref um, with an empty string. And we say send data as a function. So let's write a function send data. And in here, we do not much. The only thing we'll do is we say, well, send message to value. And we reset uh, the message to value back to empty. So we don't have to clear that manually. All right, nice. So far, so good. The only thing we want to add is probably uh, a little bit of 
uh, like a history or like messages or something. So let's just say const history. And this is of type ref. And in here is just an array of strings. Uh, we start with an empty array. And what we want to do, we want to show that somewhere. For example, we uh, want to show that below here in a pre tag or something. Well, it could actually be a diff, you know. And then we say v4 uh, entry in history. We just render the entry. And now we only have to add a few things. So first of all, our history entry should be set, uh, added when we send the message. So we'll say history.push and we do clients. So we know it's from us. Um, also history value, the push, very important. Uh, and here we say client plus message value because we want to send our own message in there too. And now if we receive data, that's the other thing. We also want to do some things. So we do a little bit of watching here on the data, which is also ref. And then we say new value and we say history.push uh, server. And once again, the dot value is important here, server and new value. This is not a ref anymore. This is just the proper value. So that should work fine. And we also convert it to a template string. Okay, let's uh, go through it one more time and then we'll have a look uh, how it looks like in the browser. That should, uh, that should be all right. So what we're doing is basically on the server, we have that WebSocket handler in API WebSocket, very important. Uh, and we have a room so we can share this with um, other people. Every client's connected gets the messages in the end. We have WebSocket client part where we connect to use WebSocket, then with API WebSocket to connect to our Nitro. WebSocket handler, and we set up a history that we'll give out. We set up a message uh, ref for bound to a form element, and we have send data over here to send some messages. Okay, should work fine. Let's jump into the browser and see what we can do with it. All right, we have WebSocket. Let's go. Okay, let's go. So we write hey, and the client says hey, perfect. So our client message is there. Nice. Um, now you might wonder, why doesn't the server say anything? Why is there no response or nothing? And the point is, well, we didn't configure anything, right? We didn't say that the server should say something. If we now open another tab, though, and just write another tab here and go back, we see, oh, the server said another user joined the chat and another tab. So now the server basically sends the messages of the other client of the other tab, test from uh, first tab can do that very simple. See, okay, this comes from us and this should be visible now over here. Server test from first tab. Now, of course, we could build this into like a full-fledged chat room with setting some usernames and so on and so on, but that's not our goal, right? This is just a little showcase to see that that works fine. Web sockets are working, especially if we have a look in the network tab and reload that one here. Um, and maybe let's filter by web sockets. We see there is that web socket connection going on here um, even with like timings, response. So this, this works fine. And if we write, for example, test here, um, and let's do this over here too, test, test, this uh, response is there. So uh, in the Chrome DevTools, you even have a full like WebSocket debugger, seeing which messages go in and out, and the WebSocket connection works. So far, so good. And now we can even do one more thing, uh, one more tiny example. Let's react to a message and then just send it to a client. So how about we build a very simple calculation thing to say, okay, if somebody writes calc space and then something, we just evaluate the whole thing. Like we say, just evaluate the, the arithmetics and give the results. How about that? Very simple uh, thing and only for the client, not for the whole chat room. So let's do this real quick. Before we do that, we also see all the things down here listed with like, okay, WebSockets open, we got some messages, we got uh, the, the right um, clients connected with just some IDs. And this works as expected. So our WebSockets are triggered and that works fine. This will also work totally okay in production, as I mentioned before, unless you're one of the platforms that's in the issue tracker right now. At the time of the recording, that T5 or so, for example, don't work because it's a bit tricky um, to create a long running WebSocket connection there. So what we'll do here now on the server part is we want to go into that message part and let's say here on calc. And this is a function we just pass in the peer in the message and we want to say, if somebody writes something of calc, then let's do stuff. First, 
we set the types, peers of type peer and messages of type message. Of course, they're not imported and they come from the package that makes the WebSockets possible at all, which is uh, cross WS or cross uh, WebSocket basically. So let's import them from their peer message from cross WS. We have a look at that in a second too. And now we will say, okay, you know what? If message.text dot starts with, if it starts with calc, then what we want to do is we want the result, which is message dot obviously text uh, dot replace. Then we replace the calc with nothing. This is the result. And now we say, well, wait, that's not the result. This is actually just the equation or something like that. Now we have the result, which is, um, don't do this in prod, is eval the whole thing, eval the equation to do unsafe, do not do in prod, can lead to XSS or symbol, because we really don't want to eval it here. Or actually it's also RCI, remote code injection. Um, we, we don't want either. So then we basically just say peer.send, we send a message just to the peer requesting that and say the result of whatever the equation was is the result, right? And we can save that. We call the uncalc over here and then we're good. So let's have a look and how this looks like in the browser once again and hope things work. Okay, let's just write calc one plus one. And there we go, server, the result of one plus one is two. If we do calc two times three times nine divided by 4.5 times three plus one, we also get 37. That looks reasonable as far as my, yeah, yeah that, that's definitely fine, nice. Okay, great, we did it. We built our own uh, WebSocket uh, implementation um, we used Nitro's WebSockets to build a little chat slash calculation bot, whatever you want to do with it. From here, it's up to imagination. You can build anything with that. It will work just fine. And that's how you implement WebSockets with Nux to Nitro. As usual, if you have any questions, please drop them down below. I'm very happy to answer all of them if I can. Most of the time that will work out. And if you have any questions around WebSockets, Nux to Nitro, or is there something you want to see about how to use maybe the tasks API or the new database layer, also write that down below so I know what to show you next week or the weeks after. Nevertheless, see you soon. Watch some other videos on the channel if you haven't yet, and otherwise, happy hacking. <laughs>